Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Dylan Miller joining us again here, our co-founder of Pursuit Institute and Expert Mindset Coach. She joins us again here today to talk more about the work she's doing. Let's don't forget her website, her book, You Can't Mess This Up, her app, Pursue You. We're going to talk all about this today. And first and foremost, welcome back, Dylan. How are you? Hey, Jill. Happy to be back. Excited to have you here. And for those new timers, we got to fill them in and let them know about all this amazing work you're doing and how you're helping so many people with your success coaching. Yeah, absolutely. So you can go and uh, you can check out our institute, which is Pursuit Institute at PursuitInstituteCC.com. You can also go check out uh, some of the work that I'm doing over at DelynMiller.com. So my name is spelled D-E-L-Y-N-N Miller.com. And uh, there's so many opportunities that we like to meet people where they're at. So we have like apps and books and podcasts and all of the all of the ways that you can connect with us. If you love to be on social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all the spots. Perfect. Join us. And Dylan yeah. Miller, by the way, spelled D-E-L-Y-N-N-M-I-L-L-E-R. Go to the website.com or of course, yeah. you can just Google her and find her on all the social media platforms. And uh, really, she's the trailblazer in the Transformative Mindset Coaching section. She's been uh, world renowned. Uh, she has amazing reviews. She's an author. You can't, I don't know where we start for today, but you have to tell us a little bit about yourself, even though I know. Uh, tell us about the book. Tell us about the app and then yeah, we'll talk for yeah. today's notes. There's so much. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, I like to meet people where they're at because not everybody, um, A, not everybody, everybody wants change. Not everybody's ready for that like giant leap. Some need it trickled in, uh, which is why I created tools like the book, like uh, the app. So the app is in Google Play and Apple. It's called Pursue You, the letter U. And it's a free app. And it honestly just if you are ready to just dive in and start breaking apart, um, you know, or, or even just breaking apart stories, but or even just want to get an environment where people are focused on their growth and they're not so stuck in, you know, their flaws or are they perfect or not perfect or guilty, just guilty, all of it. There's, there's like, right. We kind of are in this place in society where it's everything, you know, we're bombarded with, you know, between social media and like all of the perfect pictures and the perfect this and the perfect that it's, uh, it's hard to not get sucked into perfectionism. I know. It's so true. It really, it really is. But that's what we're talking about today. So we have to yeah. embrace imperfection, which is something which is very difficult for us to do. Yeah. But I know you're going to walk us through some of the pitfalls of uh, you out there trying to be perfect and how that works, but it really can mess you up. And speaking of mess you up, your book, You Can't Mess This Up. Just tell us a little bit yeah. about it before we start. <laughs> so You Can't Mess This Up. It is uh, it's all about embracing embracing imperfectionism, stop overthinking, and take inspired action. Uh, basically, like shut off the noise that's telling you not to do what you actually want to do in any area of your life, and just get out there and do it. Like start to take action on it, and literally, the you can't mess it up. the The worst case scenario, if you're going in your head, yeah, but Delin, dot dot dot, filling in your fear, yeah this will happen or this will happen or I won't have money or my health or my marriage or my blah, 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 blah. Like you have all these stories, but the fact is, is you're either, it's either going to go exactly how you want it to go yeah, or you're going to learn some stuff and you're going to pivot along the way, but you're never, you're, you can't actually mess it up. And <laughs> so many people are stuck in perfectionism. They're like, but I have to know everything before I can do anything. And that's just not true. That's just not true. Like perfectionism itself, it's it's this uh, unattainable thing where we're trying to be flawless. Yeah. And it it really comes with all of this like self-criticism and um, expectations. We put expectations on ourselves. Like I used to do this all the time. I used to want to do things in a week that literally I, I wouldn't have accomplished in a year, but I 
had expectations of myself that that's why I was going to do it. And it was going to look perf perfect. And I was going to do it with my hair and makeup done. And I was going to be wearing heels and I wasn't going to break a sweat. And I could still, you know, mom and wife and do all the things. And really what happened is I got to a point where it put me into like this paralysis, mm -hmm. right? Perfection paralysis is real. And you kind of stand there like a deer in headlights and you go, oh, like if I can't do it perfectly, then I'm just not going to do it. Or if I can't do it well, I'm not going to do it at all. And I can hear like my, my mom in my head, were you ever told this, Jill? Like, if you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. Like my mom used to say that to me. All the all time. The yep. time, right? And I can still hear it, right? And so I was just like, oh, okay, well, if I can't do it, and but perfect in my mind, and my husband tells me this all the time, he goes, like, the way you have that laid out in your mind, there's no way anybody would ever anticipate that that's the way it would actually look. Got it. Yeah. Right? That's like, but we, it... but we, what happens is we cause ourselves so much stress and anxiety all because we have these unrealistic standards of where, where we think something should go. And then when we don't do it, cause it's inevitable, cause we just set ourselves up for failure, um, that we get into this self-criticism mode and, oh, you know, but <laughs> it, so, it, it, but that's the thing. It's like procrastination chips away at your, um, it chips away at your self-image and your confidence, yeah. but, and, you know, your, your self-image kind of says to you, oh, I told you you wouldn't do that. I told you you weren't like, why do you even think you're going to do that? You know, you're not going to do it. It chips away every time we don't show up and do what we say we're going to do. It so just chips away at it. Right. And then it kind of, then we go into the self-criticism mode and then it's just kind of like this big circle of procrastination, self-criticism. We're on the hamster wheel, basically. Ah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So walk us through, uh, we, how do we learn to embrace, you know, imperfection and, yeah. you know, cause there are some misconceptions about perfectionism Big too. Time. Could you share Big some time. of those first? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like it's all about, um, just honestly having some compassion for yourself. Okay. And, and if, if you need to write this down, everybody that's listening, do that. I want you to write down, I am doing the best I can with my current level of awareness. Okay. Everybody's doing the best they can with their current level of awareness. If you aren't yep. aware of how to do something, then you're not, you're not going to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Period. Right. So like have some compassion for the fact you're a human. You were born in here and then you were raised by parents and grandparents and teachers and all you're exposed to all of these things that taught you, brought you to where you are today. Yep. Okay. But really embracing imperfection, it involves showing kindness and understanding towards yourself, right? Accepting the fact that you are an imperfect human designed with an imperfect human experience. So trying and like chasing for this perfection is it's exhausting. It's literally totally. like watching the hamster on the wheel and being like, <laughs> yep. oh my gosh, it looks so boring and I'm exhausted just watching you, right? And then tapping into um, and understanding that any like perceived mistakes, and I use the word perceived because they weren't actually mistakes, like because everything happens for us, okay? So that we can grow and evolve. Like this is... This is why we're here in this human experience, okay? So any perceived mistakes that you make or that happen for you, all they are, are opportunities for you to grow. And this is this means like when you start thinking that way, this is called a growth mindset. So yeah. if you there's and and you either have it or you have the opposite of that where everything's happening to you and woe is me and you know, you know those people, okay? Yeah. So hopping into being kind to yourself, having a growth mindset, and not trying to be anything else but you. Like, be authentic. When you start embracing your imperfection, this is what allows you to show up as you unapologetically, right? And then what happens is you then start like having genuine connections with people and everything's not this like surface level because I'm I'm scared I'm going to mess it up or I'm scared I'm going to fail or I'm scared yeah. I'm scared I'm just scared right and so when we start just being ourselves 
and like take the filter off when you're doing your Instagram post or take the whatever, right? Just be you. Okay. And you'll, what happens is you'll attract in other people that love you for you. Right. But some people haven't ever been part of a relationship romantic or non that was unconditional. Unconditional, like Im- imagine having a relationship uh, that didn't have conditions, not I'll give this if you give this or I'll do this if you do that. Right. But a lot of people don't have relationships with themselves that are unconditional. So it's like you can't expect that from anybody else that you're going to attract in. Right. So this totally. is where like when when we start when we start looking at our lives in this way and like being a little bit more flexible, like I used to be so rigid when it came to all of this stuff because but when I started accepting imperfectionism it also brought with it like adaptability but it also brought resilience right so Mm -hmm. when things would happen I wasn't like freaking out over it and it's like a huge game changer I love it yeah Absolutely. But I mean, like I said, we're kind of in this society right now and there's a lot of misconceptions around perfectionism. Like I used to think that perfectionism equals success. Like if, if it can look perfect or if it could be perfect, that then that whole, on my to-do list, be successful. I could check that off. But unless that's happened, it's not happening. Oh my goodness. Well, could you share? I You have a personal story um, that you want to share with us, right? About embracing well, I mean, and Yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to um, not, not having that fear that, and because you've put expectations on somebody else, right? Like, what because we live in a time and unless again unless you intentionally surround yourself with people that are thinking this way this is why i created spaces like the app yeah. um or within to within the pursuit institute we have uh, what's called the 2% club um we i created these spaces so that you could kind of it's like even just for like a small blip of time in your day you could escape the you know, what's kind of going on outside of you and start to kind of put that mirror up, right? We've talked about that mirror. It's always a reflection Um, because perfectionism doesn't equal success, right? Perfectionists aren't smarter. Like I used to think perfectionists were just smarter or they knew more, right? Or that perfectionism was a positive trait, right? Because this is where we've been told, but what happens is it's actually more detrimental to your mental health, to your physical health, to like every single part of you. So like, like I already said, like procrastination, it's going to lead to lots more missed opportunities. It's going to lead to stagnation. And that's not what you're designed for. And I remember when this, like I pretty much spent my whole life, it, it, up for the first 30 years of my life, for sure, And it was constant. I wouldn't start anything or launch anything or do anything until it was, I knew every single step. Like I spent my childhood, like I wouldn't, unless the craft was perfect, I wouldn't even show my parents. Right. Once, Mm -hmm. once I get all the letters behind my name and they all have to have straight A's, then I'll get the job. Okay, well, this the perfect time for me to get married will be this time. The perfect time for me to have babies will be this time. The perfect when I have this, and I was always everything's cause and effect, right? Every action has an equal or opposite reaction. But I was always putting the cause in the wrong spot. Spot, got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of me being the cause and my awareness and my, you know, not not putting high expectations on all the things, right? Then you know, I, I started really seeing the results when I stopped doing that. So even in, so there's actually a whole chapter on this in my book, you can't mess this up. And I talk about like throughout the chapter, there's one point in the chapter, I talk about um, sharing a room with my older sister when we were kids. And it honestly, Jill, it was like living in two separate worlds. Like her side looked like a tornado had went through it. And mine was like picture perfect. Wow all my stuffies were in their spots. And now I even like, I look at my own kids, like I have two daughters and 
One is a hot, runs room, looks like a hot mess. And the other one is like, everything is perfect. Are your boys like that? My son, Jackson. Okay. Perf- speaking of perfectionism, he went to like a plaster uh, a paint place last week and he comes home. He went with his dad. Mom, look. And, you know, they're white, right? When you paint it, he painted a rabbit. And look, there's not one white spot on it this time. Because last time he made a penguin and as the mom I am, I'm like, oh, we got to cover the white spots. And now I made my child become a perfectionist. Like, there's not one white spot, mom. And I'm like, okay, I caused him to be like, like this. <laughs> But he's the one that wants his room organized, his drawers organized. The other one is a a mess. And they're just total opposites. I can't change the other one. You know, this one puts his plates in the sink after he eats. The other one just leaves it there. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And that's it. My sister and I were the exact same way. And she didn't understand. She always used to just say, well, it's because you're so uptight. And I would be like your room looks like, like there's things growing in it. Like, and I have to like share that. And we would have like fight after fight after fight around this. Okay. And, but it was like perception of it right now that we're older, I'm like, she's really taught me (laughs) to embrace the chaos. And she she'll now say, okay, I can see why having a little bit of order in things works. Right. But then I go on to say, so I'm just going to open up the book right now. So this is in uh, chapter three. And I say in it, it turned out that my picture perfect bedroom was just the beginning. I lived through this illusion for the first 30 years of my life. But let's be real. Perfection is just that, an illusion, a never ending chase that can leave us feeling inadequate and drained. I knew that I was exposed to my sister's tornado for so many years on purpose. It was time for me to break free from this unsustainable ideal and find solace in embracing the imperfect, the messy and the beautiful <sighs> parts, mm-hmm. flawed parts of myself. We live in an era where perfection is idolized, showcased through carefully curated social media feeds and glossy magazines, and a world that bombards us with messages of flawlessness, embracing imperfection. It's kind of like an act of rebellion a rebellion against the pressure to conform and the constant pursuit of unattainable standards. It's about accepting ourselves exactly as we are with all our quirks and scars and oops moments, finding the courage to let our authentic selves shine. There we go. This is, and this is the beginning. Honestly, Jill, Every single person I talk to, it, I'm like, what do you want? What do you, what's your goal? What do you want? And they're like, freedom, freedom. And freedom means different things to different people. Some people are like, I want financial freedom. I want freedom in my health. I want freedom in my relationships. I want time freedom. I want, they talk about freedom. Okay. This is freedom. When you yes, can, yeah. when you can live from the inside out, And no, just no, like, you know, like, you know, call it faith, call it whatever you want to call it. But when you have that, that's freedom. And it is the best, most rewarding feeling in the entire world. And it can't be replaced by anything. Like people search their entire lives searching for it, or they search in tons of things outside of them. And it's when you go in and that's freedom. So if you're looking for freedom, it's the only place you're going to truly find it. Oh, beautiful. And I mean, thank you for sharing that. And I mean, I know you've shared your personal story with us before I've gotten to know you and a little bit of your background, but I just think it's important to show people or tell people a little bit about your life and how, (laughs) tell me about the, the migration, because not everybody could pick up from their home and realize, okay, it's time to go and move to an Island. Like you had a lot, you had an amazing career, right? You were working, making a a lot of money in the corporate world. Right. And then you, You weren't happy. Yeah. I mean, I liked it. And I I mean, I liked the work, but I didn't love the work. I wasn't like jazzed to get up and go do it every day. And finally, I just had this moment of like, um, and we've talked about how like, uh, for me, a big part of it was, you know, I have these little humans that don't always do what I say, but they will always do what I do. And what am I showing them by just feeling like about somewhere where I spent like 10 hours a day. Are you kidding me? Um, And I finally just said to myself, Delin, like, Mm -hmm. you're going to kick ass at whatever you do. Like, 
right? Like this is where working on yourself, you truly realize like, what are you passionate about? And what are you, what excites you? What lights you up? And so I started just looking at like, what parts of the job that I did in corporate for 15 years, what parts lit me up? And then I asked the question of, well, how could I do that every day? And my business now, 10 years later, it only reflects things that bring me joy. Like, no, there's not one thing in my calendar. Like even Jill, if I got on this podcast and I didn't felt like I was like, I don't like talking to Jill, I wouldn't come anymore. <laughs> I'm like, that just yeah. doesn't bring me joy, but I like it's talking not, to Jill. No, no, but I this get is it. Where, yeah, but I'm just like, I'm not spending one moment um, not doing things that bring me joy. And don't get me wrong, there's parts of my business that I figured out quickly you know, oh, I don't really like doing that. But then I just hire it out because it brings somebody joy. It just doesn't bring me joy, right? And a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't do that. They're like, oh, it's going to cost money or it's going to cost time. And it's just like, what's your joy worth, right? And we asked the exact same thing when we decided we were living in Southern Ontario in Canada. And it was like February of 2022. So it's like two years into the pandemic and we're freezing our butts off and we like to be outside and we love heat, like all four of us, we just love it. And um, my husband was home from work one day, he was a police officer and he had kind of like that, that job was, um, uh, it was, you know, at weighing its welcome at that stage too. And he was like, oh, what would it be like to live on an island somewhere? And I said, hold the phone. Let's <laughs> ask that question. Let's just hang there for a minute. What would it be like to live on an island somewhere? And then I was, and he's a research geek. So I said, start researching where we can live that checks all five of these mm -hmm. boxes, right? That we kind of had these standards that we had. And Literally, he goes, okay. So he, you know, settles in to start doing his research. And um, literally, he had done one island and then a Barbados <laughs> pop up. It was like literally a divine intervention. Like, look no further, try this. And we had never been to Barbados, but it literally checked off all the boxes. So we thought, oh, we'll go there for a year, see if we like it. Packed up the dog and kids, came here, and we knew immediately we were like well done universe well done this is exactly where we're meant to be and now we've been here for two years and it's absolutely incredible and again did had we been here yeah. before was it going to be perfect and no but by that stage I had enough evidence under my under my belt of like if it feels good, just do it. Like, don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about what everybody else is going to say. Because I mean, some people that were close to us thought we were nuts, like literally thought they needed an intervention. Oh my goodness. How embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I don't think they're wrong, but yes. Thank you very clearly. <laughs> yes, clearly. Uh, and how many years has it been now that you're there? We're, we've been here for over two years now. Yeah. Amazing. And love it. Like still love it. I still wake up every day and I'm like, oh, just flip and pinch me. Like this is the coolest thing Ugh. in the entire world. And it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And the people, that's my favorite part about Barbados. So if nobody's been to Barbados, I it's never beautiful. Have. Oh, the turquoise people. waters and white sands, but the people, the people, I always just thought that when you went to visit an Island that the like, no problem slow, I thought it was just, you know, because I was on vacation, but they're just, the, and that was the thing. They kept saying, no problem, no problem. And I thought that's going to drive me bonkers. But then I was like, wait a sec. It actually is no, is problem. no problem. Like I'm making it a problem and I need to chill out and yep. totally change my life. It was oh. awesome. So now well, I'm like in the land of no problems. <laughs> I love it. And just to quickly also add to this about fear, right? Because fear is yeah. one of the biggest things that hold us back from yeah. taking action. So how are you working with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, to get over this? Could you just, you know, yeah. share? We got two minutes left in the show. I would love to yeah. hear a little bit about that. For sure. For sure. You know, fear is, fear is always the, the under, the undertaker <laughs> of all of the things, right? Yep. Um, and, and typically our fears like if you actually look at them, um, they're just, it's like a word or a, it's, it's like, there's really nothing to be scared of, but we've built it up in our minds, right? It's yeah. why one person can be afraid of something that another person, other person's going, what are you even scared of? Like, that's no big deal. Um, 
but these are the things that begin to hold us back, right? Yeah. So some people go, well, oh, I couldn't live. I couldn't just pack up and move to Barbados. And I'm like, okay, well, either way you have a desire, yeah. right? So you have a desire for change. I wish I could do that, but you also have a desire to stay yeah. the same. So one desire has to outweigh the other. Well, for me, after living in Groundhog's Day for two years, <laughs> From 20 to 20, 2020 to 2022, my husband and I were like, yep, no, desire for change is way stronger, even though like we had never, both of us had never lived within, like we'd always lived within 20 minutes of our entire family. Yeah. Like we had never done anything like this and it was just, but it became a no brainer. So like, even when it comes to somebody's health, like I could have the desire to look like a Greek goddess, but also have a desire for a Big Mac, right? Like yep. they're both a desire, but what desire is going to win out, right? And and usually it's the one that's comfortable, that avoids, avoids fear, right? Like people won't go and start doing their things to look like the great goddess, because they also have to go, well, what happens in my life? If this, if I actually get there, it's change and it's unknown and I don't know it. And it's scary. It is. Well, tell us how you could bring us joy. How can we reach out to you and get started to work with you and the programs that you offer? For sure. So, um, you could start working with me, um, but go to the website, go to DylanMiller.com. And um, I have, there's life coaching. We, I have an amazing program, actually, Jill. It's called One Thought Away. And it really helps people to realize that um, it's their thinking and how they're thinking um, that's getting them their current results. And then we get them thinking in a totally different way. And it's a six month program. But okay. by the end of the six months, you do not come in the same person that you let. Like Love you do not leave the same person you came in with. It's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. How can we reach out to you to get started? Yeah. So go to delimiller.com. All of my contact information is there. You can follow me on social media. Uh, you can hook yourself up with the book. You can't mess this up. Yep. Um, and you can join me on my app, Pursue You. All right. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here. Always jealous of your tan. Maybe one day I'll get away soon, but the sun's coming to New York. It's going to be 70 degrees today. We're excited about this. So <laughs> coming. Coming. Uh, thank you so much, Lynn. Pleasure having you back. And don't forget yes. to pick up a copy of her book as well when you go to that website. Uh, and it's on Amazon too, right? It is. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.